ladies and gentlemen. Cowboys and girls, I remember when we used to play shoot 'em up. Bang, bang, baby. I remember, y'all. You know what I remember? Everybody and their grandmama didn't know about this. I want you to pay attention to McCaskey versus Wiggins, 1984. The Constitution does not require a, in a criminal trial or a civil trial, such as traffic court, to be initiated by a former plea. You do not have to enter a plea of not guilty, guilty, or nono contender. No contest. You do not have to enter a plea. There is no law requiring you to enter a plea. The historical record shows no support for the proposition that the Fifth Amendment due process clause requires in a civil or a criminal trial to be initiated with a formal plea. What do we mean by civil trial? A misdemeanor action, something that carries a sentence of less than one year. Let's see if it's true. They already told me it's true. I already know it's true. I've known it was true. That's why I have the information here. Ladies and gentlemen, the Supreme Court ruling in McCaskey versus Wiggins is significant in criminal trials to address the role of a standby counsel in a criminal trial where the defendant conducted their own defense. The court held that the accused has a Sixth Amendment right to conduct his own defense, provided that they knowingly and intelligently forgo their right to counsel, waive their right. The case established the Constitution does not require in a criminal trial to be initiated by a formal plea, and the historical record shows no support for the proposition that the Fifth Amendment due process clause, the Fifth Amendment due process clause, pay attention, requires in a criminal trial to be initiated by a formal plea. This ruling reaffirms the right of a defendant to self-representation as established in Ferretta versus California and clarified the role of standby counsel in ensuring that the defendant's rights were protected while they conducted their own defense. So what gives the court the right to enter a plea on your behalf? Absolutely nothing. Now remember, when you enter a plea, let's go ahead and highlight it. When you enter a plea, the very act of pleading, whether you're using pleading papers or you plead to the court, it admits the genius of the record. Now, let's see what the courts have had to say about that admittance. Hold on now. Watch this. This is a template that I put together for somebody. Did three motions for the person this morning because they're actually going through something in Florida. And I ain't got time to do, deal with all that stupid. The very act of pleading acts, now it's just a genius of the record. Now, pay attention to these case laws. By pleading to the indictment, the defendant admits the facts alleged, but does not admit to the legal sufficiency of the to constitute a crime. He may still contend that the statute under which he is charged is unconstitutional, and the facts alleged do not constitute an offense, but he still admits that the statute has jurisdiction over him. Pay attention. A plea of not guilty puts in every material fact alleged in the indictment. What? including jurisdiction of the court. It says a plea of not guilty puts in issue every material fact alleged in the indictment, including the jurisdiction of the court. It says it puts in issue, but it admits the formal sufficiency of the indictment. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> if you've already admitted that the statute applies, then all they have to do is prove that you violated the statute. You want to challenge the statute as unconstitutional so you don't plead. Okay? Pay attention. By pleading to the indictment, guilty, not guilty, not a contender, the defendant admits the truth of all of the well-pled allegations in the indictment and consents to being tried on the issue of his guilt or innocence. He cannot, therefore, challenge the sufficiency of the indictment on appeal. Ta-da. Hold on. These are rules. This 1954, Supreme Court. Hold on. Let's continue. The United States versus Roger, 1985. The general rule is that the plea of not guilty puts in issue 
only the factual allegations of the indictment, not the legal sufficiency of the statute, whether or not the statute was enacted by Congress or some judicial revisionary council, okay? By pleading not guilty, I'm going to enter a plea of not guilty on your behalf. Hold on now, we'll talk about that in a second. The indictment admits the formal sufficiency of the indictment establishing jurisdiction and the jurisdiction of the court. Ladies and gentlemen, hold on now. Only a defendant can enter a plea. That's why the defendant, when entering a plea, has to be present or he has to give consent to his attorney to enter a plea on his behalf. The court, the judge, may not step from the bench, walk over to the defendant's table, say, okay, uh, I enter a plea on behalf of the defendant, leave the defendant's table, go back over and sit back on the bench and say, okay, well, I'm going to remand this matter over for trial. Illegal. Okay? Pay attention. A defendant who pleads Guilty or not guilty admits the allegation of the indictment and weighs all non-jurisdictional defects in the indictment. Pay attention. By pleading guilty, not guilty, not a contender, the defendant admits all the factual allegations. By pleading not guilty, the defendant admits to all the formal sufficiency of the indictment in the jurisdiction of the court. What? Say what? Okay, that's what they're doing to y'all. Okay. The charging instrument, by alleging a violation of a particular statute, necessarily admits the validity of the statute. So when you plead guilty, not guilty, you're admitting to the the sufficiency of the indictment. The charging instrument, the indictment, the charging instrument, by alleging violations of a particular statute, necessarily admits, I'm admitting this into evidence, your honor, the validity of the statute. Stop letting them do this to y'all. The information filed by the prosecuting attorney charges the defendant with the commission of a specific crime. And by doing so, it, I admit this into evidence, your honor, admits the validity of the statute which defines the crime. Do not let them do that to y'all. Okay? Do not let them do that to you all. Now, not all of these cases are accurate, so to make sure of the accuracy of the case, watch this. We come over to perplexity, and we put it in perplexity.ai. And you don't have to sign up for perplexity, but when you do, you can keep your history. Okay, this is a statement related to legal principle charging the defendant with a specific crime and the prosecution attorney. Implicitly acknowledging the validity of the statute that the the defendant committed the so-called defined crime. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's see. For further details, analysis of the case and the full text case can be accessed through legal databases. Okay, uh, how does the prosecuting attorney admission of the validity of a statute affect the defendant's case in this Miller? Instance. So let's find this out and then we're going to let y'all go. Oh, they did not return any information. Based on the existing knowledge, the attorney's admissions of the validity of the statute by charging the defendant with a specific crime typically means that the statute itself is not in question during the trial. Of course you want to question the statute as legal, lawful, and having validity. Of course you want to do that. Do not let them do this to y'all. Y'all got to stop and start speaking up because when you don't speak up, that's when you're going to run into a whole lot of stupidity. You just got to understand that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. So when you enter a plea or let the judge enter a plea, that's when they're violating your rights and subjecting you to involuntary servitude. We're going to go ahead and turn off the... uh, we're going to turn off the music, y'all, because we there yet. Are we there yet? We there yet. Turn off. Who was playing next? Angie Stone, wait for me. Hey, Angie, we're going to talk about you next time, okay, girl? All right, ladies and gentlemen, there's one more. Let's show it to you. <sighs> Got to talk about the judge entering a plea on your behalf. Give me one second. Indictment, indictment. 
nope, not there. It's one of these, I think it's before that, or an appearance. Appearing, Your Honor, before the court, an appearance is the official court file, the court clerk, blah, blah, blah. All court notices and calendars will be mailed to the address listed on the form. When a defendant in a civil or criminal case files an appearance, the person is submitting to the court's jurisdiction. That's called involuntary servitude. If you did not do it knowingly and intentionally and deliberately, that's involuntary servitude. They're not allowed to subject you to involuntary servitude. I got to take care of that little gap right there because that's too big of a gap. Give me one second. I'm trying to find, oh, yeah, and calling somebody a sovereign citizen. Whoo-wee, that's the first thing they want to say. Well, you guys, y'all can challenge that because they're not allowed to call you a terrorist on the public record or even off the public record that is liable and slander if you've not been convicted of such and they cannot convict you of being a sovereign citizen they don't have the jurisdiction because there's no law so if they say it at any time that you are supposedly a sovereign citizen and call you one of them so-called terrorists then get them for libel and slander then go after the bond okay now, what I'm saying is by subjecting the individual to the jurisdiction and by entering a plea on their behalf, they're making the person a slave. Slavery and voluntary servitude has been declared illegal. So I provide proof that there is no law requiring anybody enter a plea, and then I put the definition of what a plea is. Let's see. No plea of guilty can be entered against the express wishes of a competent defendant. The trial court has a duty to ensure that the plea is truly voluntary and that the defendant understands the consequences of his plea, whether it's of guilt, not guilty, or nano contender. You get to make the choice, not the court. The court doesn't get to enter a plea on your behalf. That's your choice. The Constitution does not require a criminal trial to be initiated with a formal plea. Ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't. It never did. So why they say, well, you have to enter a plea? No, I don't. You can't show me one single law that says that I must enter a plea. And nor can you make up one because entering a plea strips me of certain rights, such as not being subject to your jurisdiction. To be subject to your jurisdiction is voluntary servitude, if I agree. Well, I choose not to be subject to your jurisdiction, and there's no law saying that I must be subject to your jurisdiction. So you can take your jurisdiction and you know what I mean? All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. Got to go. 13 minutes. Out of here.